In this video, we're going to create a simple Ethereum DAB using Vue and the Drizzle framework. We're going to use a package called Drizzle Vue Plugin, which is a Vue plugin to make Drizzle work with Vue. The DAB we'll create is a simple DAB connected to a storage smart contract that can get and set the value of an integer field. I'm already assuming that you have some basic knowledge in Drizzle and Vue. If you need an introduction to Drizzle, you can check out my other video on YouTube. I also have a more advanced video on Drizzle in a screencast series on Idoblox Pro, as well as a tutorial to build a to-do list DAP with Drizzle. All right, so I'm gonna go to my terminal and I'm gonna copy some boilerplate code into my working folder. So for that, I'm gonna use the repo of Idoblox. So I'm gonna copy in the screencast folder to episode number 12 and there is a start directory that contains our code that we're gonna use to get started and I'm gonna copy this over in a local start directory so after I'm gonna step into this directory and let's see what we have inside so this is a standard truffle project with a spot contract in the contracts directory, the migration in the migration directory, the configuration in the truffle config file, and for our front end is in the VAP directory. So let's see what we have in a contracts folder. So I have a simple storage smart contract. So let's see how it works. So this is a very simple smart contract that has an integer state variable and a setup function where you can change the value of this variable. And since this variable is a public one, then we also have a getter of the same name of the variable. So it's as if we had defined a getter function called store data. All right, so next, let's see what we have in our configuration file. So in the truffle.config file, this file is very simple. We have a single configuration here. So contracts build directory. With this setting, we can configure where we want to save the compilation artifact. So in a truffle project, every time you run the truffle compile command or the truffle migrate command, it automatically compile all your smart contract and save the contract artifact in the build folder. In our front-end code, we will need to import these contract artifacts. But the problem is that we used the Vue CLI to bootstrap the front end and the Webpack configuration it uses does not allow to import files outside of the folder that has all the files of the front end. So with this configuration, we're able to save the contract artifact in a folder that is compatible with our Webpack configuration. All right, so that's it for our configuration file. So let's get out of this and let's see what we have in the front end code. So we're gonna go in the VAP directory and let's see all the files and folder. So this is a classic Vue project that I bootstrap with the Vue CLI command. So all the code is in the SRC directory. And let's have a look at the package.json. And let's see what we have in the dependencies. So we have the Vue framework. Then we have Vuex, which is basically the equivalent of Redux for Vue. The Drizzle plugin uses Vuex to store the state of the smart contract in the front end, so we need this dependency. Next, we have the Drizzle framework. All the code that communicates with the Ethereum blockchain and your smart contract is inside Drizzle. And finally, we have the Drizzle plugin for Vue. The Drizzle framework doesn't make any assumption about which front end framework you're going to use to render your HTML. So, in order to connect Drizzle to your front end framework, we need a connector. In our case, that's going to be this Vue plugin. The Vue plugin will store the state of the smart contract in a Vuex store, and in your Vue application, you'll be able to connect your components to this Vuex store. One last thing before we finish with package.json. So at the time of recording this video, the Vue plugin has not been released yet to the NPM repository, so I reference directly the GitHub repo of the Vue plugin. But when you watch this video, this Vue plugin would have been released to NPM. And instead of this reference to GitHub, then you will see the version number of the package in NPM. So that means that at the command line, when you install the Drizzle Vue plugin, you're going to install it like this. So NPM install then namespace of Drizzle slash Vue plugin. All right, so enough with the dependencies. So let me clear my screen and let's have a look at what we have in the SRC folder. That's where we will write our code for the front end. So first we have our main.js file where we will render our root component inside our HTML markup. Then we will have our root component app.vue 
where we import all the other components and render them. Then we have the assets folder where we store the assets like images, etc. Then we have the contracts folder where we store the contract artifact that are produced by Truffle. So that is because in our configuration for Truffle config, then we specify a custom path for saving the contract artifact. Otherwise, this would be in the build directory without this special configuration. And finally, we have drizzleoption.js, which is a configuration file for Drizzle. So let's start with Drizzle option. So I'm going to go back to my editor and I'm going to open this file, drizzleoption.js. So as I said before, this is not a video about Drizzle. Watch the introductory video about Drizzle if you need a refresher, but very briefly, First, we import the contract artifact of our smart contract, and after we define an options object, and we define a few keys. So first, the Web3 key define how we connect to the blockchain. After, we have another key contracts where we pass an array of contract artifact. In our case, we just have one contract simple storage. And finally, we define an option to customize the frequency at which we want to refresh data from the blockchain. All right, so this is it for the Drizzle option. And next we're gonna go in the main.js file where we're gonna make use of this Drizzle option, configure our Vuex store, and also configure our Drizzle view plugin. So let's open this file, src main.js. And the first thing we're gonna do is to configure our view app to use Vuex. So first we're gonna import Vuex from Vuex. Then we're going to configure view to use view x. So we do it with view dot use and give it view x. Then we need to create the store. So we're going to define a variable called store. And this is equal to new view x. And view x is going to take an object that defines the initial state. So our initial state is empty. And we close our curly braces and parentheses. And actually, I forgot the method store. So vuex.store with an uppercase. And with this, we create our store. And finally, we need to attach our store to the view application by specifying a value here in the object given to the view constructor. So here, we specify store. OK. And Give it a comma, and with this, our view application will be connected to a Vuex store. Next, we need to connect our view plugin for Drizzle to the store of our view application. So, first, we need to import our view plugin. So, let's go up and let's import Drizzle view plugin from and we reference the view plugin. So, at Drizzle view plugin. And we're also going to import the drizzle option. Import drizzle option from the drizzle option file. All right, and now let's actually connect this view plugin to Vuex. So below this line, we're going to use view.use again, but this time we're going to pass it drizzle view plugin. And this is going to take another argument so that's an object for our view plugin. So first we're going to give it the Vuex store and also the drizzle options. And then the drizzle view plugin is going to figure it out and connect itself to the Vuex store and everything's going to be connected after that. Okay, so next we're going to turn our attention to the app component. So let's go into this file. And before we do anything with Drizzle, we need to make sure that it's properly initialized. And for that, we can rely on a Boolean value provided by the view plugin, which is called is Drizzle initialized. But before we can read this value from the Vuex store, we need to map it to a property of our component. If you know React and Redux, this is very similar to when we use the map state to props function. So for Vuex, there is no direct equivalent for the map state to prop function of Redux. Instead, there are different equivalent functions depending on the nature of what we want to get from the Vuex store. In our case, we want to read a value, so what we need is the mapgetter function from Vuex. So let's go to the script section, 
and first we're going to import the map getter function from view x so import map getter from view x and after we're going to define a computed property on our component so just below the name let's define a computed property and we're going to use the map getter function so this map getter as the first argument can take a namespace so the namespace is drizzle and second it takes an array with the different properties of the state tree that we are interested in and actually I've made a typo it's not map getter but it's map getters with s so let's fix this let's replace map getter by my getters all right, so now we're able to access is result initialized in our component. So let's scroll up in our template. And here in our rapid div, then basically we're going to add a directive to only display the content of this div if this is drizzle initialized value is true. So let's use the v if directive and the value of this if is is drizzle initial Last. All right, and if that is not the case, then we're going to display a loading message. So let's go down, and after this div, let's create another one. Then this time it's going to be v else, and in this case, we're going to display loading and three dot. Okay, so this way we are guaranteed that everything that is inside this div will only be rendered and executed only after drizzle is ready so next we're going to implement the show the account section here so this is going to show a list of all the address of the user and for this we're going to use a component provided by the view plugin of drizzle that's called drizzle dash account and this takes a few props first we need to specify the units so units equal ether and we also need to specify the precision so in our case, we want two figure, two digit for the precision. So it's going to be equal to two. And we close the component tag. And actually, there is a little view tip that I'm going to give you here. So instead of precision, I'm going to add colon precision. So what's the difference between here precision and units? Well, if you don't specify any colon, view is going to treat the prop as a string so in this case unit is going to be a string but if you put a colon it's going to treat what is inside a double quote as javascript so in our case for the precision we don't want the two to be interpreted as a string so a trick in order to pass numbers as prop is to add the colon so that view interpret this as javascript and does not transform it into a string and transfer it as a number so it's just a little trick all right so we are done with this component and before we continue to the simple storage section i would like to make you notice something so before if you use drizzle with react you probably know that there are three packages so there is drizzle drizzle react and drizzle react component so drizzle is where we have the core logic of the drizzle framework drizzle react is the glue code between drizzle and your react application and drizzle react components are ready to use react components that you can use to directly call the function of your smart contract for Vue, it's a little bit different. We still use the core package of Drizzle, but for the Vue plugin, it not only provides the glue code between Drizzle and the Vue application, but it also provides some ready-to-use Vue components, such as Drizzle account that we've just used. All right, so with this being said, let's go to the next section, which is simple storage. This section will interact with our smart contract. So let's quickly have a look at our smart contract to remind ourselves what we have inside. So we have our public variable and our set function. So in our view frontend, we will have two components, one component to read the value of this variable and another component to execute this set function and modify the value of the store data variable. For these two things, we're going to make use of the components already provided by the view plugin. So let's go back to our JavaScript file. So let's start with reading the variable. For that, we're going to use another component provided by the view plugin, which is a drizzle contract. So just below, we're going to make use of our drizzle contract like this and we're going to provide it with a few props first we need to provide it the contract name so our contract is called simple storage 
then we need to specify the method so the method is store data because that's the name of the getter that is automatically created by solidity since we declare this variable as a public one and finally there is an optional prop that is called a label so we're gonna put value for label okay and let's close our component and the last thing we need to do is to provide an interface for executing the set function that will modify the value of store data. So for this, we're going to use another component of the view plugin, which is called drizzle contract form. So let's create this component here. So drizzle contract form. And we also need to give it a few props. So first the contract name. So this is the same thing, simple storage. Then for the method, this time is set. And instead of label, this time we're going to have another prop called placeholders with S. So this will be a description of each of the input field. Since a smart contract function can have several arguments, we need to give it an array. So in our case, our array will just have one element. By the way, we're going to put a colon in front of placeholder so that Vue interprets our prop as JavaScript. And here we define our array inside and it has a single entry, which is value. All right. So now we have finished our front end code and we are ready to test the whole thing. So let's open another terminal window and go to the root of the project and start a Truffle console with Truffle develop. And we need to deploy our smart contract on our development blockchain. So migrate dash dash reset. All right. And open another terminal window. And this time we're going to go to the root of the front end project. So first from the root, we need to go to VAP. Then you need to install dependency with npm install. So I already did it. And finally, you need to run npm run serve. Okay, and we have some errors, so let's scroll up. Okay, I forgot to close a component tag, so let's go back to the code. And here in drizzle contract form, let me close this. All right, let's save this back to the console. And this time it works. All right, so now copy this address and paste this in the browser tab. So we can see the address of our first account with the ether balance. And we can also see the value of the store data variable in our smart contract. And now if we try to change it, so for example, let's put 50 and click on submit. And we can see that the value properly updates. So it's working. Yeah. So now you know how to create a DAB using Vue and Drizzle. In this video, we learn how to use the components already provided by the Vue plugin. But sometimes you might want more flexibility and build your own custom component. In the next video, we are going to refactor what we just did, but this time using our own custom components. Thanks for watching.